Welcome back to Simright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful cow kaftan. It's actually a short cow kaftan with yoke and it also has a collar as you can see right there. So this beautiful kaftan is actually very stylish. As you can see the yoke, the collar, the drapes all looking so beautiful so you can actually make this longer you can also make it shorter i mean the sleeve can be shorter it depends on choice so if this is what you want to learn please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial to learn more thank you so to begin this tutorial the first thing we are going to draft is the yoke so this particular dress has a yoke and it also has um, it also has a color. So I'll just use my paper to draw this. Then later I'll place it on my fabric and cut out. So this is what I have at the center front of my paper. So from this center front line, I'm going to create my on the shoulder line. I'll just create my border line of one inch as usual. So once I mark out my one inch, this is my center front and my center back, CB and CF. So I'm going to measure my three inches because it has a collar. Three inches for collar width and collar depth for back is one inch. Collar depth for front is uh, neckline is three inches. So I'm going to connect both back and front uh, neckline since it has a collar. So I'll go ahead and connect. Then I'll connect the neckline. Okay. So once I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do right away is to measure my shoulder. So my shoulder is 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. I'm going to mark the 7.5. So this is seven and a half and it has a yoke like if you look well you see it has a yoke so that yoke i want to make it at uh, eight inches okay so we can make it at eight inches you can also make it at um seven inches so it all depends but i just think eight inches would be uh, nice enough so then from the shoulder, I'll just simply come in. I'm going to come in by one inch. So if I come in by one inch, I'm going to freehand my yoke. So I want it to have a curve yoke or a curvy yoke. It can also be a V-shaped yoke. But I'm using a curvy yoke because of my neckline. So it matches appropriately. So once I've done that, we are done with the yoke. So the next thing I'll do is to cut out the yoke which is the most important part of this tutorial so i can also connect this yoke i'm thinking of if i connect it from the shoulder line so it's not too small i'm just trying to make it look standard okay all right so i can just connect from the shoulder line so it does not look that small so it's all by choice anyway, but I think connecting from the shoulder line will give us a better look. So here is my yoke. And when I'm going to place my fabric, I'll cut out the neckline along with it. So when I'm going to cut out my yoke now, I'm going to place for the back and for the front separately. So you are going to see how I'm going to do that. So let me leave it the yoke at this first. Then we'll continue. So the next thing we'll do now, we'll be using what we have right here now. We're going to place it on our fabric to cut out the cow part of this dress. Any light fabric for this. So the fabric I'm working with here is a chiffon fabric. You can also use silk fabric to sew this. You can even use um, um, any light fabric that can drape. Okay. So I have three yards right here. The fabric on the yardage, this is the yardage line, is at three yards. 
So I'm going to put the yardage line into two to form to have a one and half. So if I put it into two like this, like this, I have one and half on each side. So this is the folded part of it. So this folded part of it, I'm going to also fold it again. And that is going to serve as our shoulder line. So I'll just fold it again. So it's going to serve as a shoulder line. And this is going to serve as a center front, center back. I have folded it. You can see I made sure I fold it appropriately. So like I said, this part is the shoulder line. Okay, so here is the shoulder line, the starting point of our measurement. So, but for this particular drape gown, it has a yoke. And that yoke the, is at 8 inches. So, first and foremost, the first thing you do is to place your tape and mark out 13 inches. Okay, 13 inches is standard. I'm marking that 13 inches. That's the first thing. So no matter what your uh, measurement or your size is, just place your tape here. Mark out 13 inches. So you are going to see why we marked out the 13 inches. This is my 13 inches line, which I told you is standard. I believe you are seeing my uh, the lines. So the next thing you are going to do now, you come from the outer part of this sleeve. So this is a sleeve area. So make sure you know these fabric wobbles. So make sure the fabric is stable. So I'm going to mark my sleeve length from here. You can see I placed my tape from the sleeve and I'm going into the dress to mark out the sleeve length. So wherever you want the sleeve length to be, just mark it out. So for me, I'm going to work with 18 inches as my sleeve length okay so from this 18 inches right now i'm going to create the shape i have on my yoke this way but this time it's going to be up to the exaggerated length so what i'll just do is i'll start from the 13 inches to start covering it from the 13 inches line, I don't know if you have seen my chalk line, but just try and follow my hand. So from the 13 inches line, I connect to the shoulder. So all of this part, we are going to gather them into this yoke after we are done cutting out the yoke. So that is the measurement that is desired. So this curve, I will leave it at this. Then from this line of 13 inches, remember that the yoke height was 8 inches. From here to here, we measured 8 inches. So this 8 inches now, I'll place it on the line of 13. I'm going to place it on the line of this 13, like this. I'll place 8 inches here. And measure my desired full length so I place 8 inches I'm going to measure my hip height from there so my hip height is 29 I'll mark my full length of this dress I'm using 44 I don't want it as short as it is right there on the thumbnail so I'll just use 44 so after you have marked that, I'll come over to my hip height. I'm going to measure my hip circumference. My hip circumference divide by 4. I have 12. So I'm going to mark 12 at that point. So I'll mark 12. So here I will pick up my hip uh, circumference divide by 4, which I got at 12. I'll take it to the hem and also mark exactly the same pin. Okay, so if you want to make it pencil, you can just go ahead. So since it's on the uh, above or on the knee line, you can just make it pencil by one inch. But for me, I'll just make it straight at this point. So from the hem, you can see me connect the, the measurement of the hip to the hip line. 
from the hem then from this hip line i'm going to first mark out my sleeve opening so for my sleeve opening at this point i'm going to make use of five inches okay so i'll open up at five inches add half an inch for seam allowance that is five and half in total so five and half in total so from this five and half i'll go in a little bit by three inches so i'll connect it this way from that point then i'll take it straight you know how we have usually mark out our cow dress i'll take it cow all the way till i get to the hip line so already on this hip line i will now put my curve to go into straight so like i said if you want to make it pencil you can go ahead and pencil it at that point so since it's a short dress i'm not adding anything if it's going to be long then you need to add allowance or slit okay if you're taking your hip if it's going to be long you need to add three inches more so you'll be able to walk but since it's just exactly on the knee line or a little above the knee line so it's just okay we can work with it so i'm going to cut out what i have right here so right here you can see me cutting out what i have right here especially from the cow parts i'm going to cut out the yoke as you can see this is what i have at after cutting out i'm going to make notches on the shoulder line as you can see me make right here and on the center front center back line then i'm going to cut out my yoke i'm cutting out my yoke separately okay i have separate piece of fabric to cut the center back and the center front so you can see how i'm folding it right now so i'm going to first cut out the neckline for the back okay then place it on my folded fabric and then cut so i have two fabric and i'm separating it for front and back so cut out the neckline for the back first place it the part on fold add your five zero point five inch seam allowance as you can see me do right here so once i'm done this is this, the back yoke it has no opening but the front yoke right now i'm going to fold it into two and come in by two inches you can see me marking the two inches so on the two inches line i'm going to place my center front okay so here i place my center front but first of all cut out your neckline for the front add your seam allowance of 0 0.5 inch all around as you can see so i'm going to separate the piece at the center back front to make it two pieces so this is what i have right now so i'm also going to este and cut out my lining so here is my lining i'm going to join the shoulder lines as you can see for back and front and i did the same for the lining so i'm going to lay the two together like this and match the front line so i'm going to sew this front line then turn it around and give it a good press so i'll just sew the part we are going to have our button i'll just sew it top stitch give it a good press you can see what i have here i finished the neckline top stitch and gave it a good press that is at the center front line okay so i pinned the shoulder seam lines for the back and front if i i secured everything with my pin i'll go back to my machine now i'm going to close up run stitches to close up round close up the neckline so i'll do that now i'll come back to show you what next to do i've trimmed off the edges and i've stitched around it to hold it as one piece so you know that we added two inches here and now we have stitched half an inch so remaining one and half so that one and half remaining on the center front line i'm going to i'm going to fold 0 0.75 in okay i'm going to stitch on it and keep it as one piece as well i'll also fold in 0 0.5 inch keep it as one piece so I'm going to stitch on top of the 0 0.5 inch right now to give us our neckline. 
so the neckline will also overlap again you know it's a button neckline with a collar it will overlap at another i've folded it by 0 0.75 okay so this is the shoulder seam line i'll place it on the shoulder line for the boots just to make it equal so once i've done that i'm going to bring in my just to show you that we still have 0 0.75 overlap here i'll bring in my pattern and you can see what i have this is the shoulder line and this is the center front line so what we have here is 0 0.75 remaining out of the two inches we added so we are done with the yoke right now so the way it is i'm going to measure our neckline for the collar drafting so i place my tape on the center back you can see how i'm taking the neckline this way till i get to the end here i have 10. so 10 multiplied by 2 will give me 20 all around the neckline so i'll just come in with my pattern paper right now for the drafting of the collar so your pattern paper has to be unfold can you see i have mine unfold here you are going to make a border line from this folded edge i'm going to draw a uh, mark out the 10 inches which we just uh, marked right now so this is my 10 inches and half of 10 inches is 5 inches okay so here will be at the center back where here why here is my center Front. so from this center front line i'll come up by half an inch so once i come up by half an inch i'll place my pattern ruler this way from that half an inch let it touch the middle line like this now at this center back line the width of my collar is one inch my collar stand is one inch so I'll keep marking this one inch, following the shape I have right here. One inch till I get to the end. So I'll come again with my pattern ruler and I'm going to do what? Connect to that one inch. From here, I'll connect to that one inch. And from here, I'll connect to the one inch. So at this point, I'll just connect my line so from this line right now i'm going to come in again by half an inch from here i'll come in by half an inch then i'm going to use the inner part of my curve ruler or you can equally freehand it as well so i'll just use if i cannot freehand it i'll or let me just use the inner inner curve part of it so I'll just place it to the point of that half an inch like this and create my collar stand. So we are done right now and the collar stand is ready. So this is the collar stand I'm going to use for this particular collar. So I will draw another line. Now is for my collar itself. So I'm going to still maintain the line I have, the 10 inches I have on this point but this time around I'm going to mark out 2.5 so it depends on how uh, long or wide you want your color to be but 2.5 is okay so I'll also mark same 2.5 at this point so once I've done that I'll go ahead and connect a straight line so from this point at the center front I'll come in by one inch then i'll co connect that one inch to this point that will form my collar so at this point i'll come up by half an inch so once i come up by half an inch i'll place my pattern ruler this way can you see that i'll just place it at the midline this way and connect so that is how the collar is going to look like at that point so i'll just cut both the collar and the collar stand so this is my collar and this is my collar stand so if you want your collar more wider than this you can come up by three inches so you have a wider collar 
So but for me, I'll just go ahead with what I have right here. So I'll just go ahead and cut out what I have. Okay, so I'm cutting both the color stand and the color itself. So what I have on this color stand, I will use it to cut out my fabric and then I'm going to heste my fabric. I'm using my color stand to cut out what I have. Okay, so I'll still place it the way I placed it to cut on the folded edge. So I'll place it, it's on fold already. So I'll just push it a little and cut out. So I'm cutting same shape, no seam allowance, please, no seam allowance. So I'm cutting exactly the same shape. The same size without seam allowance. So that is what I'm going to use to stay the color right now. So after that, I'll also place my collar, okay? I'm going to place my, the collar itself, so I'll position it very well, and cut out two. So I'm done with my cutting right now. So this is what I have. So you can see I cut this exactly the same shape. So I'm going to right, So this is what I got after sticking the collar to the collar stand. So I'll just go ahead and place them right side to right side. Then I'll come in with the lining right side as well so i'll go back to the iron uh, to the machine i'm going to stitch this way to the end leaving here open this is what i have right here and this is my collar as you can see so now i'll bring in this collar so the collar is going to lay this way so just look at what i'm going to do i'm going to match this color to this color right side to right side and I'm going to place it. But before I do that, I'm going to make a notch to the center back. So this is the center back. And I'll also make another notch like this. As you can see. So now... I'm going to secure it with my pin. So I'm going to secure it with my pin. So what I'm doing is to sew the collar inside. Then I'll come again and notch the center back. I'll notch the center back like this. And then I'll also secure it as you can see so i'll now go ahead and stitch from here to the end i'll follow here and stitch to the end let me do that i'm sewing the collar so like i said the way i placed it i have to sew it all around so this is what i got for my collar so now, this collar, you can see the midpoint of the collar right here. So I'll still take it around this way and place a notch at the midpoint. So I place my notch at my midpoint. Then I'll come over 
to the color itself uh, to the yolk and I'm going to also get the midpoint so I'll use the seam line to seam line as the midpoint so now you need to place this color this way did you see how I placed it the lining to this because after sewing this I will use this one to also fold it around so the reason I place it this way is because when you fold the collar, the neckline, you need to see the fabric together. So see how I did it. Let me demonstrate it again. I'm going to iron this part that is coming out. It, was, it, it did not really stick. So I'm going to sew my... Okay, let me make the notch more prominent. So I'll go back to the machine now. The lining part, I'll place it right here. Since I'm using another fabric, I'll sew the lining to the end. Then I'll come back to top stitch with this. I've stitched this to this. So I'm going to use this to cover up this. So I'll just go ahead and fold in 0.5 inch and I'm going to top stitch to, till the end. Let me do this. I'm sewing the collar. As you can see, so the color is ready on the yoke line. So the next thing I'm going to do is to bring back the dress. I'm going to, on the neckline where we are going to attach our yoke, note that I made notches to them. So I'll just go ahead from one notch and run my gather stitches. So let me do that. I'll gather up to uh, all of them to the width or the measurement of the yoke now i'm done gathering the exaggerated yoke part so i'm going to match the yoke notch by notch show that seam line to the notches i made remember i asked you to make notches secure them with my pin i'm going to match the center front as well to the center front so i will just match it all around and make sure you make your gathers even you can see me making it even then i'm going to overlap the button line okay so i will just overlap it before i stitch so you can see me placing it and i'll bring the other center front and overlap on top of it okay so that is the button for you attaching the yoke this is what i have as the result of the dress so i'm going to close the side so right now I'm done. I've the size of this dress. I've closed it up as you can see. So the side is the abaya, which you know very very well. The most important part is the yoke part of this dress with the collar. So you can see how it's actually looking very beautiful. So I'm going to sew my button to it. So one two buttons should be okay for this color so this is how we come to the end of this tutorial you can also make it as long as you want you can also make it as short as you want following the same process so this is what the back looks like with the yoke so later i'm going to give it a good press so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial once again if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well thank you once again see you in the next class bye